back to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Digital strip searches keep spreading that freedom. We've got that story plus removing landmines. But first, one click closer to nuclear annihilation written by the near legendary Philip Giraldi on Global Research. The Nuclear War Doomsday Clock, maintained on the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists website, has advanced to two minutes before midnight, the closest point to possible atomic apocalypse since the end of the original Cold War. In 1995, the clock was at 14 minutes to midnight, but the opportunity to set it back even further was lost as the U.S. and EU allies took advantage of a weakened Russia to advance NATO into Eastern Europe, setting the stage for the new Cold War, which we are now soaking in right now. America's next top president continued to kind of set this tone when he harangued the United Nations last week, warning that the United States would go it alone in defense of its perceived interests with no regard for international bodies that exist to limit armed conflict and punish those who commit war crimes. Trump's 35-minute speech featured, of course, a highly anticipated long section targeting who, of course, Iran. The emotional description of disrespecting neighbors, borders, and sovereign rights actually fits the U.S. and Israel to a T way more than Iran. The U.S. has soldiers stationed illegally in Syria while Israel bombs the country on an almost daily basis. So who's doing the disrespecting? Washington and Tel Aviv are also the principal supporters of terrorists in the Middle East, not Iran. Arming them, training them, hospitalizing them when they are injured and making sure they continue their fine work in attacking Syria's legitimate government. And as for most dangerous weapons, Iran doesn't have any and is a signatory to the non-proliferation nuclear treaty of which Israel and the U.S. are not signatories to. And in the last week, we have had Mad Dog Mattis, Hellfire Haley. I, I just came up with that one. And Dark Act Pompeo all beating the war drums. Even, of course, the U.S. Congress critters getting into the act. A bipartisan group of U.S. senators who were carefully briefed on what to think by the Israeli government warned after a trip to the Middle East that war between the U.S. and Iranian proxies is imminent. Philip Giraldi wraps up his article by saying, if this is making America great again, we might just settle for making it good so we could possibly avoid doomsday midnight. James? Yes, well, I think our uh, regular viewers will probably need no elaboration on the point that the neocon, bloodthirsty, warmongering criminals that infest every layer, that have been appointed to every layer of the Trump administration by Trump himself, are clamoring for war. Bombs Away Bolton and Hellfire Haley and all of these critters are uh, clamoring for war at every opportunity, so that should be no surprise. And for people who are not up to date on this, uh, you I strongly suggest you go and read that Philip Giraldi article in its entirety because he lays out the case in all the different ways, all the different um, boogeymen that are coming along to take the, the crosshairs of the U.S. State Department and foreign policy generally. So we know things are, as they always are, I suppose, on a knife edge, but seemingly even more so than usual at this point. Um, and it seems like the big buildup towards Iran is continuing, as it has been for a decade, a decade and a half, well, a lot of people can shrug their shoulders, roll their eyes and say, well, they haven't done it yet, so they're not going to. Well, you keep saying that until it happens, right? Um, and who knows what events might be in the works to make such an event happen, given that people like Giuliani and the other 9-11 war criminals are still hovering around this administration. That should be worrying to all. But I want to pick up on a different aspect of this. It's not just the the warmongers and the criminals who are clamoring for these wars and trying to hype it up in the public sphere. It's also the alt media can play into this by exaggerating, amplifying, sensationalizing, and otherwise playing up discord um, that will help to foster discord in real life. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. What am I talking about? Well, for example, uh, Jason Ditz over at antiwar.com has this uh, article up. U.S. would preemptively destroy Russian warheads, on Envoy warns, basically talking about U.S. Ambassador to NATO K. Bailey Hutchinson appearing to threaten war against Russia in comments Tuesday, saying the U.S. was prepared to preemptively take out certain Russian missiles that the U.S. objects to Russia having. Wow, crazy. Well, not surprising, but wow, this is a huge escalation, right? They're actually threatening preemptive war. 
until you click through to the link that he provides to that source of what he's going from. It's a Reuters article that specifically says, and uh, Hutchison clarifies that she did not refer to preemptive strikes and blah, blah, blah. So uh, whatever, you can take, I mean, yeah, there's seven layers of this and maybe it was the wink and the nod towards we will blow you to smithereens without actually coming out and saying it and blah, blah, blah. But when the alt media reports it, they should report it with that nuance and say, well, actually, she said that this is not about preemptive strikes. Rather than headline, preemptive strikes, we're going to war with Russia. That amps things up. The alt media can play into this and make things even worse. So I think there's a responsibility that we need to have as independents um, to not play into this fear cycle and the doom porn cycle as it ratchets up because there's no ratcheting that down once it gets started. And unfortunately, we can play into it and do the propagandist work for them. And we really do seem to be back in the 9-11 era of all the neocons are back and even the interesting things kind of going on in the news and the propaganda sphere really interesting it doesn't seem to actually get as much coverage as i would imagine it to get but i will include it as a related in this anthrax false flag redux pentagon got two packages of deadly poison ricin yesterday and to continue the sort of neocon bush rehabilitation push there's a new trailer out today for the dick cheney movie called vice it's interesting to sort of see the, the the mainstream media again almost, you know, sort of love and act like they miss George Bush. And maybe in this case, they'll sort of continue to de- demonize the, the bad Cheney as the propaganda just continues to roll onwards and onwards. On this episode 354 of New World Next Week, our second story takes us to the digital strip searches. As the headline from Activist Post, digital strip searches increasing at borders, refusal could lead to $5,000 fine. Apparently, the era of digital papers, please, is upon us. Earlier this year in March, Activist Post reported on allegations that travelers on domestic flights within the United States had received warrantless requests to inspect their digital devices. The allegation led to an as yet unresolved lawsuit, at least unresolved to our knowledge here in this article. And again, everything we say and mention will always be included down in the show notes. An as yet unresolved lawsuit filed by the ACLU of Northern California against the TSA. While not being aware of further reports coming out of the U.S. about demands for digital device searches, New Zealand says, hold my beer, and has now openly declared it as a policy as Radio New Zealand reports the Customs and Excise Act 2018, which is now in effect, sets guidelines around how customs can carry out digital strip searches. Previously, customs could not stop anyone at the border and demand to see their electronic devices. However, the law did not specify that people had to also provide a password. The updated law makes clear that travelers must provide access, whether that be a password, pin code, or fingerprint, but officials would need to have a reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing. It is a file-by-file search on your phone. We're not going into the cloud. We'll examine your phone while it's on flight mode, customs spokesperson Terry Brown said. And if people refuse to comply, they could be fined up to $5,000 and their device would be seized and forensically searched anyway. Travelers refusing digital search now face $5,000 customs to fine. And James, I would just maybe ask the question, can you just put your fondle slabs into your suitcases and things and ship those away? Or will they still demand to, to break into them? Good question. And you'll find out when you're uh, going through customs and they, they uh, pull you aside for extra screening, which is, of course, something that did happen to me a decade ago. It was not re- related to electronics, but at that time they were physically looking through my uh, diary and reading it and asking if they could photocopy it and all of this. Uh, I told that story in the very first ever edition of Questions for Corbett, so people can go back for more details about that. But this is an issue I've had on my mind for many years because I've gone through this experience in the physical realm, so I can only imagine what it would be like in the digital realm, especially now that I'm a person of interest with this website that I have. So I certainly think about it when I'm crossing international boundaries, and that's why I try to leave behind electronics uh, to the extent that I can when I go traveling. If I don't need to bring my phone, I ain't going to bring my phone. Um, And, hey, I mean, 
Here's a potential opportunity for New Zealand entrepreneurs, digital holiday services. Hey, are you coming to New Zealand? Don't want to bring your digital life through so you can be digitally strip searched? Well, you know, we'll we'll host you whatever files you need and give you the, the pad when you get in and blah, 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 whatever. I mean, I personally wouldn't use such a service because as you always say, the cloud is just someone else's computer and I wouldn't trust someone else with that information. But hey, if I'm sure there are a lot of normies that would take you up on that anyway. But uh, yeah, it's obviously a disturbing trend. And luckily, there are d various solutions, but they do involve pr preferably you setting up your own server and then uh, renting or, or, or in other ways acquiring equipment when you get to the host country, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's at the point where I if I can get away without going without bringing any electronics, I will not bring any electronics with me. So it was, I know in the sort of earlier media monarchy years in the late oddies, as the you know as the website was was becoming you know becoming more into its own. Each time I would fly, I would always think, oh man, this this is going to be the time they're going to kind of pull me aside for that extra search. And yet they never did. I, ironically, it was usually my wife setting off the uh, alarms for accidentally bringing through knives and, and weapons and what have you. And James, we actually we've got to go through. She, she's a, she's a, she's a tech person. She's got tools and equipment on her usually most of the time we both actually have to go through dulles airport in the district of criminals very soon and i very much hope i don't run into their new biometrics boarding system or i might be the news on our next new world next week episode as we move to our third and final story this week james i think after last week's pretty dour episode and i didn't have a new episode of good news next week myself you specially requested and i hope i can fulfill that request to wrap up this New World Next Week episode with a little bit of good news via our buddy Justin at Nature Hub North and South Korea removing landmines in the DMZ. In another progressive step towards ending decades-long conflict, North and South Korea began removing landmines from the DMZ, a.k.a. the Demilitarized Zone, a 155-mile-long stretch of land that separates the two nations. On Monday of this week, South Korean Army engineers began demining the southern regions, while North technicians reportedly began demining on their own respective territory. Once completed, they will continue with the agreements made during their recent peace talks by removing a dozen guard posts from the border before December. In addition to being littered with over 2 million landmines, which sounds like an impossible task to remove, the DMZ is also suspect, suspected to contain the remains of hundreds of UN and North Korean soldiers from the 1950 to 1953 Korean War. James, so a little bit of good news that we file this under maybe not unmitigated good news. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I did specifically ask for a happy story after our first two stories here today have been particularly uh, unhappy. And this is a good story, and it's about something that's, that's developing that... Hey, yeah, there's a lot of hurdles along the way, but this is a step in the right direction, blah, blah, blah. It's so great, you know, thank you. But now that you've provided the upper, I'll provide the downer because <laughs> uh, the, the bigger picture here is the question that's sort of hanging over the Korean Peninsula right now. Is the Korean War over yet? Can we, can we say it's over? It's only been 65 years, you know? I mean, can we actually get a peace treaty? And I did write about this specifically in the International Forecaster a couple of weekends ago. Is the Korean War over yet? Spoiler, no, it isn't. And uh, unfortunately, whatever good progress is being made between South Korea and North Korea that's hopeful, uh, it's undermined by the fact that any negotiation for peace involves the U.S. and China as well. So unfortunately, you got the whole kid and caboodle in there. And it really, the, one of the central issues that isn't even on the table as far as I've ever seen in any of the discussions that are happening right now is... OPCON of Korean military forces. If you don't know what OPCON is, read my editorial and find out about what is actually necessary for a, a real peace to be possible on the Korean Peninsula, and it ain't gonna happen when the U.S. has OPCON. I'm gonna wager OPCON may be something similar to R2P, but I'll wait to find out that truth. Fine, James, that's not good enough news for you. How about this? 15 years of cannabis convictions thrown out by Seattle Judge. In other good news, in closing, not only do I stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific time, but I've also got a brand new Media Monarchy website that still needs a little bit of work. It's just out of the packaging over a couple of days ago, but I would love to see folks over at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen, James. 
That is good news, but I swear that I saw that uh, um, actually overall convictions for for cannabis have been up in the U.S. since this era of legalize it or decriminalization. So I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I won't try to bring you down again, but I will bring everyone down by saying that we will not be here next week. Uh, deprogramming note, I am going to be uh, basically off next week and my longtime listeners will know that I am off next week means I'm working on a project that you're going to see in a little while. So stay tuned. Hang on to your hats for that. But uh, I won't be doing much, if any, media next week, including New World next week. Well, so in, in, in lieu of the loss of James Corbin next week, let me extra invite people to come check out the Media Monarchy stream. It is, it, it's pretty sticky. I find that when folks come and check out the Discord community and the chat and the stream, they're like, dude, I like it here. I, I want to become a member. So hopefully in the in that in that uh in that time off folks. Awesome. Maybe. Yeah, and I'll I'll echo that. Please, everyone, check it out. And uh I think we're gonna leave it there, but we'll see you guys in two weeks. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Take All care. Right. Take care.